a piecewise linear representation of a shape. So the first guess would be, you know, representing a circle using a triangle. But we all know that that is a bad representation because you can see that there is this error between the circle and the triangle, which is, you know, it's, it's glaringly a lot of error, uh, a very large error between the circle area and the, and the triangle area. So what, what can we do? Well, we know that we are free to use any polygon, right? So we can increase the number of sides of this polygon, let's say to six, and then we see if this hexagon better represents this circle. Well, yes, to some extent we could say, yeah, it's a better representation of a circle, but then we could probably do better if we increase the size to 12. And with 12 also, you see a little bit of an error. So you increase it to 24 and then you can keep doing that. And you would notice that the more the number of sides you use of a polygon, the better your representation becomes, the closer it becomes to the circle. So the takeaway is that you can represent an arbitrary shape using with a piecewise linear representation. And in this case, the piecewise linear representation is my uh, polyline representation, right? Which is a close, so it becomes a polygon. But it's essentially a polyline representation as far as the boundary of the shape is concerned. And we are mostly concerned, in this case, we are mostly concerned about the boundary because I'll come to surface meshes that are also boundary of a solid mesh, right? We'll talk about solid mesh and surface mesh in a bit. But a surface mesh, you, uh, a surface is the boundary of a solid. So think of a, um, think of a wooden log, right? It's a solid mass. Most of the times, what we do is we just represent the boundary of that, the surface of of of, uh, of an object. In this case, a wooden log, right? Because the interior of that you can't anyway see. So if your application doesn't demand analyzing or looking inside the wooden log, you don't want to represent it, okay? So you just represent the boundary, which is the surface, and you're done. So this is, that is a surface representation. So what could you do to do that? If it's a 3D object, you could just cover the surface of that wooden log with a set of triangles, right? Analogously, in this case, you have a disk. And what is the boundary of a disk? It's a circle, right? So you want to then cover the entire circle with uh, with a number of line poly line segments or a polyline uh, in collection that best describes my circle. There is always an inherent error in in this type of representation, and then that error turns out to be order h square, where h is my distance perpendicular distance between the Line, the maximum perpendicular distance between the line segment and the circle, right? So, so that's my piecewise linear approximation in 2D, right? Which is known as a mesh. And in 3D uh, or in three space, what I want to do is represent the boundary, cover the boundary. Uh, whenever, I, whenever I say boundary, a boundary is defined in any in an n-dimensional space. And let's also go one step back and and talk about the dimensionality of an object versus dimensionality of space. It's a very it's it's a it's a small concept, but it goes a long way because otherwise I have seen uh, you know we get confused between the dimension of the object and dimension of the space, right? So what is dimension of an object? The dimension of an object is the is, is its dimensionality. For example, a curve, a wire-like object is always one-dimensional. A point is always zero-dimensional, irrespective of whichever space it is placed in, right? So if a place, if a point is placed in a 2D space, so if I draw a dot on a piece of paper, the dot, the point is still zero-dimensional, but the ambient space is, or the embedding space, is two dimensional. So in this case, we would say the dimensionality of a space is two, whereas the dimensionality of the object, which is a point, is zero. Similarly, for curves, they're always one dimensional, be it drawn on a, on a real line 
or drawn in a 2D space, or it's a 3D curve. Can somebody give me an example of a 3D curve? Anyone? Sir, a helix. A helix. Yeah, great. A helix, right? A helix. A 3D helix uh, is an example of a of a 3D curve. So, so and and similarly, you can go to higher dimensions. Uh, but a helix, for example, will always remain a one-dimensional object irrespective of the dimension it is placed in or embedded in. So, similarly, if if I talk, if I say a surface, a 2D surface, I mean a a sheet of paper. I can place a sheet of paper in a 3D space, but the sheet of paper will still remain a sheet of paper. If you if you zoom into any part of that sheet of paper, you will always notice that in the small vicinity, small surrounding of a point, uh, it looks like a plane, two-dimensional space, even though globally it could be curved, right? So if an ant, for example, moves on a piece of paper, which is, you know, uh, bent into a cylinder or something, the ant will not see the cylinder. It will always see uh, that it is walking on a plain uh, plain sheet, similar to what we observe, right? We see that the Earth is flat because uh, locally speaking, uh, Earth looks the Earth looks like a plane everywhere, but globally, it's a it's a it's an uh, it's it's like a uh, it's like a body it's it's a, it's a sphere. It's not spherical, but you know. Uh, so. The point here is that dimensionality of an object could be lower than the dimensionality of a space. I can embed, in, in for example, in a 3D space, I can always embed any object that is of dimension three or less. I can have solids in 3D space, I can have surfaces in 3D space, curves in 3D space, and points in 3D space, right? So, so that's the, dimensionality of the embedding space versus dimensionality of the object so when i say boundary of an of a shape i mean the the boundary as in the uh, the part of the of the shape uh, which is on the outside which is always one dimension less than the dimensionality of the shape for example if i have a if i have a ball a solid ball Right, something that is filled inside. The boundary of that ball is going to be a sphere, a hollow one, right? And then I can, of course, a, a, a ball, a, a three ball stays in a three space as a solid ball. And I can always have this sheet, this, uh, this sphere in that three space. So, so it is clear the dimensionality of the space versus the dimensionality of the object. And uh, whenever I say boundary, boundary is a concept that 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 can be uh, you know uh, that that is defined in any dimensional space. When I say surface, surface is usually referred to as a two D shape, a two D surface, right? So in this case, the boundary is a curve because it's a circle, but when I say a surface or a boundary of a solid, that's that's my 2D surface. So coming back here, and by the way, any questions, please please shoot, please ask, uh, ask it right away. Now- So just, uh, uh, so just like clarifying again from whatever you uh, discussed just now. So say we have just the boundary of the circle versus a disk, the uh, boundary of the circle is a 1D, uh, 1D object, whereas the disk is 2D. The disk, yeah, that's right. So, so you don't uh, say boundary of a being... circle, you say boundary of a disk. Because circle is any okay. way a one-dimensional okay. object. So boundary of a one-dimensional object is going to be a point, which, you know, circle is a closed shape. So it, it may not have a boundary. Anyway, so uh, you are right. Um, in a sense, you said a disk. A disk is a two D shape. Hmm? It's a two uh, manifold. A disk uh, is no, a two no, D shape, and then uh, no, not regarding the disk. The, yeah, regarding the circle, I wanted to ask. So, despite it being closed, we are considering it as one. 
yeah so so shapes could be closed and that doesn't change that that may have no impact on its dimensionality okay, thank you it could be open i can cut it open and make it an open curve in that case it has a boundary but if it's a closed curve then then there is a boundary similarly you have same you, you may have the same uh, ideas in in uh, for for surfaces surface meshes could be closed or open if it's an open you may find a you can find a boundary but if it is closed, then no boundary. Right? That, does that yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right, great. So then we define uh, a mesh as a graph. A mesh is a graph because it has two things. It has a connectivity and it has a geometry, right? So maybe now is the right time for me to write something. Let me share my screen quickly. Right. So, so a, a mesh. So, what is a mesh? A mesh is a is a graph basically. Is a graph that has vertices and edges. It's a connectivity, right? So you have nodes connected with edges. But it's a special type of graph. It's a graph that has a lot of cycles. Because when I want to represent a shape, I want so for a shape, I need a tiling, right? So this is a tiling. What do I mean by a tiling? Is that the space is covered. So that's one tile, and then adjacent to it is another tile, then another tile, another tile, and another tile. And let's say that that was my 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 shape was. The one I'm drawing in red here. That was my shape, let's say. Okay. So I could tile it with with these polygons, let's say. Okay. And then for time being, let's just say that it's a 2D 2D shape in in 2D space. I can do that. We'll come back to 2D shapes in 3D space, but for now let's let it be a 2D shape in 2D space. And I'm covering it with some polygons. So it's a tiling. It's a tiling, right? Tiling is important here. So how could I represent? There are clearly two things here. One is the topology, topology of this tiling, and the other is the geometry of this of this tiling, right? So the topology is captured, captured by a graph, and of course, geometry is captured by uh, the coordinates of of the nodes or the vertices, right? So I can write here, here the coordinates of, of the vertices. So what kind of a graph is it? So when I said I, I tile it up, I have polygons here, and these polygons are connected to each other. So I'm, I'm just drawing it in between the the vertices here and there, there is some connectivity information uh, which is which is uh, stored here so thick lines so these are the this is the connectivity information so that's my that's my graph that's my graph right so how how, how do you how can you store this connectivity information this is best stored as a graph that is, which node is connected to which other node. Make sense, right? So it's a graph that has a lot of cycles. There are no dangling edges, no dangling vertices. Um, and so it's never a tree. It has, it has all cycles. And it is these cycles that form the facets. So, so a mesh, a mesh, I can say, is a graph with with facets. Facets are essentially cycles, right? So a graph with facets, where 
you have these edges that are connected to form facets. So what are the components of this graph? It has vertices, of course. It has edges that connect vertices, and then it has facets. Okay, so so that's that's a mesh. And uh, depending on what types of facets we have, we have different types of meshes. For example, we may have um, triangle facets. We have we may have triangles here. In that case, it's known as a triangle mesh. We may have um, quadrilaterals, which is in which case it is known as a quad mesh. And in general, you can have any polygon, which case it is known as a polygon mesh, a generalized polygon mesh. Some some of the things, uh, some of the um, I wouldn't say properties, but but some of the uh, obvious properties is that um, an edge connects always connects uh, two vertices. I'll number them. An edge is incident on two facets always, right? These two are true always. And um, what else can I say here is that a vertex is connected to to a number of of edges, and this this is known as the um, valence of the vertex. Known as the valence of the vertex. Okay, and of course, uh, a facet has a number of edges also known as sides of the facet and um, also has a number of vertices right so that that's pretty much it about a mesh um, so so these two right the, the the first, the number one and number two are always true and fixed. So an edge is always connected to two vertices and an edge is always incident to two faces, right? And this is equivalent to saying that edges and faces share an edge. I hope that is that is clear. So, yeah. So that's that's about meshes. Let's let's go back to let's go back to our okay. So so here are the mesh elements. Uh, a mesh uh, a mesh has faces, and that's a subset of a 3D plane. Now a 3D plane by a 3D plane, I mean a 2D. A plane is always 2D, right? When I say a plane, I usually mean uh, in the geometric sense, I mean that it, it, it's always it's, it's a 2D surface. So when I say 3D plane, I'm short circuiting my sentence and saying that a plane placed in a 3D environment. Okay, so I hope this should be clear to you. So when you when you hear a 3D plane, what should you understand? You should understand that it's a it's a 2D entity. It's a 2D plane. A plane is always 2D, which is placed in a 3D space, 3D Euclidean space. So that 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 should be that should be clear. So it has facets, uh, polygonal facets, edges, and vertices. And the topology of the mesh is captured by the underlying graph. All right. So that's that's the that's the basic uh, mesh, the idea behind a mesh. And um, usually it's a it's a piecewise planar approximation. Like you can see here, two different types of meshes. The element types could be, you know, I said triangular, quadrilateral, or in general, polygonal. 
so here are the same here are two different representations of the same object and i believe it's a cad object and you can see that the difference is between when you represent the shape using a triangle based tiling versus a quadrilateral based tiling tiling so in a quad tiling it's it's a quad mesh every every uh, element facet element is a quad and um, if it's a if it's a regular regular mesh the valence of every vertex in a quad mesh is exactly four okay let's first see what is regularity okay so a regular mesh is one that has all regular vertices so what is a regular vertex a regular vertex in a triangle mesh is called regular if it is if its valence is six so recall what is the valence valence is the number of edges connected to a vertex so for a triangle mesh if i'm connecting a vertex with six edges what does that mean how many face sets around that sharing that vertex who would who would answer that six exactly six right so exactly six face sets connected to a vertex then it's valence the, the valence of the vertex is six and that is for the interior vertices now a mesh may be closed or open if it's a closed mesh then all vertices of a regular mesh a regular mesh is if all vertices have the valence six but sometimes the meshes may be open that is they're not closed they're not watertight so for example if i chop off part of a mesh then it's an open mesh and maybe you know uh, I, I can show you in mesh lab or something some example of an open mesh but if you if you have a boundary in a in a mesh then it has a uh, then the triangles on the boundary the vertices of uh, belonging to the triangles on the boundary will have a balance of four the, the vertices that are on the incident on the boundary so maybe do i need to draw something and, and maybe explain that maybe i can do that that's already uh, So, so let's say it's a it's a, a 3D mesh like this, and um, it is open from here. This is the open part, and that's the interior. Um, that's the that's the interior. Um, so valence is six whereas if you have this that's the boundary maybe i can draw the boundary in blue that's the boundary of a mesh open of an open mesh remember a closed mesh will you will not find a boundary in a closed mesh so that's the that's the boundary if we draw the triangles A regular vertex is known as a vertex that has a balance of four on the boundary. Is it clear to all? Any questions? Right. So that's that's an open mesh. So. A regular mesh is a one that has all regular vertices. Be the mesh closed or open, that doesn't that doesn't matter. Therefore, um, the mesh, if you see at the top, uh, looks like it is a regular mesh. Similarly, in quad meshes, the regular valences are for interior vertices, it is four, and for boundary vertices or exterior vertices it is three and i believe you can you can do it mentally as to how a boundary in a quad mesh will look like for interior it is fine you know you have four quads joined together so you have four valence 
but for the boundary you have only two quads adjacent to each other therefore the valence of a vertex such a vertex is three if you don't understand let me know but i hope this is clear and vertices that are not regular are called irregular or extraordinary vertices so it is in a mesh it is not necessary that you have all regular vertices um, it is pretty common to have meshes that have extraordinary vertices okay so that's 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 about surface meshes and it's a surface surface mesh so this tiling covers the boundary of the shape there is nothing interior there is nothing inside now let's talk about data structures that we can use to build such um such a uh, such a mesh but i just recall that maybe you know i just talked about nothing being present inside so i i i thought maybe i should clarify that point and uh, a very a connected concept is is called is of is of a manifold so so maybe i can uh, you know quickly talk about manifold as well so 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 there is a notion of a manifold mesh or a manifold surface versus a non manifold surface you may have heard this somewhere but but manifold versus non manifold what is the idea behind a manifold surface or a manifold so we say a surface is two manifold and that's you know uh, a definition that should clarify that that should clearly you know anytime you are confused if you if you just think about this definition that that's going to help you so a two manifold is uh, a surface that looks like a 2d plane a euclidean plane locally everywhere So remember that example of the Earth, uh, or that of of an orange and an ant moving on an orange, for example. To to the ant, it's 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 a flat world. But we know that it's not flat. Uh, but if you go infinitesimally close to a point, you know, for now thinking that the orange or the Earth is very smooth, it would look like a uh, it would look like a. Uh, planar sheet so for example if i if i draw this irregular surface and and then i see locally very close to and i draw it in a different color if i go very close to this this point then can i zoom in no i can't if you see in a very small interval this looks like a line so locally it's a it's a line and then if i go here i can and i can arbitrarily make the interval uh, the, the interval of investigation is as small as I want. So if you see that this band it doesn't look like a line, then you could make it even smaller, and then it would look like a line. So uh, uh, in this case, this this is a this is a one manifold, right? And similarly, a two manifold is is one where you would find that in finitesimally very close to a point, you would see a plane always at, at all the points now when when would it not look like a 2d plane so i'll i'll just take this example of of this uh, one manifold and i'm going to cross it out and make it a non manifold so if if it has a if it has a structure like this then you would notice that however close you go here you will always find a t junction the T junction will never go away. And it is the T junction that would make it not look like a line. So that breaks the manifoldedness of this of this um, shape. Similarly, in so what 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 would how would a T look like in a in a on a surface? So let's let's say you have let's say you have a surface that, that looks like this, and then um, and then let's say you have 
another one that goes like this. So you have uh, you have this surface, okay? And it is here uh, that you that you would notice that at all the points at that edge, it's like a T locally, right? Uh, an extruded T, and that makes it a non-manifold. So yes, a mesh can have things inside that could make it non-manifold. And most of the times when we are talking about meshes, uh, good meshes are always manifold. Uh, it's very difficult to make a non-manifold mesh a manifold because that's, that, that's a challenging problem anyway. However, the, uh, you know, having said that, a mesh can always contain another component inside uh, in a in a manifold fashion. So I may have I may have a for example, I may have a sphere. I may have a I may have an object here uh, like this, and then and then another object like this. That doesn't make it non-manifold, right? It is it is when it touches it. So either an edge is shared, or it could it could be something like this. So it could it could be let's say, you know, a point here, a singularity that could make it non-manifold. So these are non-manifold. So this was just to tell you that uh, you know a sheet of paper, if it's if it's simple, that is there are no p junctions or there are no no common vertices like the one shown in this double cone example, it is most likely a manifold. So as long as it looks like a, you know, topologically it looks like a a plane, uh, it, it qualifies for a two manifold. Now some of you may have a question that, you know, what if I have a cube? Is it a manifold or not? Who would who would tell me if it is it a manifold or not? And then let me make it a mesh. So I I will split the sides of this cube into triangles. And forgive my drawing. I'm I'm making multiple strokes here just to beautify it. But who can tell me whether it's a manifold or not? I have it's a plain cube uh, with twelve facets, triangular facets, connected in the usual connectivity of a of a cube, uh, who will tell me whether it's a manifold or not? Anyone here? Yes, sir, it is a manifold. Okay, who thinks that it is not a manifold? It is okay to say that it is a non manifold because you might say that, look, there are parts of this. Uh, cube that that go like this. So you have you have things like this. That's one triangle that I took here, and then that's the triangle that is not visible. So how about this edge? Is it a manifold? Is it a manifold edge or non-manifold edge? It's not a T, but does it look like a uh, does it look like a plane? Any thoughts? Uh, a cube will have vertices, so it should not be uh, two manifold, right? At least in my opinion. Right. So I'm saying any non-differentiable portion should not be manifold. Should not. So, so a cube like this is a non-manifold. Yes. Okay, that's not. That's not okay. Let Let me tell you. This is not. This is a. This is a very well valid two manifold. There is no doubt about it, because when you talk about manifoldedness and non-manifoldedness, we are talking about uh, the object in the topological sense, right? So this guy, this guy is equivalent to a sphere. So you, for for once, you ignore the geometry and focus on the topology, the connectivity here, right? And you know, I could. By some transformation, by some mapping F, I can transform this 
cube into a um, let me try to draw into a um, into a sphere that has you know this sort of uh, connection I could say let's say there are you know these 12 face sets around and then you would say that yes now it looks like a manifold because then these creases are gone or at least minimized so for manifoldedness is a topological concept and anytime you are confused these creases don't count so you don't differentiate you don't say that it's not differentiable or it has you know c c uh, c1 discontinuity that is it's only c naught that it is a manifold or non manifold no so you don't decide based on the uh, smoothness you look at the topology there are no t junctions so it's, and, and so there are two three cases of non non manifoldedness and none of them appear here and you can always map this cube it's topologically equivalent to to this sphere to this uh, to this sphere so that's a that's a manifold circuit is it clear any questions uh, so it will be useful to look at the homeomorphism to the object it is homeomorphic to yes 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 that's right okay yeah i, I don't want to go and get into the you know too much deep into it but yeah you can you should read a more i mean those interested should look at look at more into you know uh, uh, these concepts of homomorphism and uh, and topology but you know we just wanted to say that uh, meshes could be non manifold and that is a problem so we usually look at meshes that are uh, too manifold 